Did you know that George Harrison, the spiritual beetle, embarked on a quest for spiritual authenticity that lasted his whole life? Born in Liverpool in February 1943, Harrison grew up in a working-class family where music was a common thread. His father was a bus conductor who had a passion for music, and this love was passed down to young George. As he matured into his teen years, George found himself drawn to the guitar. His natural talent was evident and before long, he was part of a band that would soon take the world by storm, the Beatles. Alongside John Lennon, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, Harrison would become a global icon as the band's lead guitarist. However, it wasn't just the music that defined Harrison. His spiritual journey began in his youth, where he was exposed to Christianity. But the young Beatle found himself disillusioned by the faith. He perceived a sense of hypocrisy within the church, a contradiction between the teachings of love and the actions of its followers. As Harrison once said, not the stained glass window or the pictures of Christ, I liked that a lot, and the smell of the incense and the candles I just didn't like the hypocrisy. This disillusionment didn't turn him away from spirituality though, quite the contrary, it sparked in him a curiosity, a need to explore and understand the deeper meanings of life. He yearned for authenticity in his spiritual journey, something he felt was lacking in his early encounters with Christianity. But George's spiritual journey was only just beginning, as he soon found himself drawn to the mystic East. This would lead him down a path of exploration and discovery, introducing him to philosophies and practices that would deeply influence his life and music. A trip to India in 1968 marked a turning point in Harrison's spiritual journey. George Harrison, known as the Spiritual Beetle, found himself drawn to the mysticism of the East. This was a time of introspection and exploration for Harrison, a time when he delved deep into the philosophies and practices of Indian spirituality. In India, Harrison was introduced to the teachings of Hinduism and the practice of transcendental meditation. His keen interest in Eastern philosophy was fueled by his interactions with the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, a prominent spiritual leader at the time. This period of spiritual exploration had a profound influence on Harrison, shaping his worldview and his approach to life. He began to incorporate elements of Indian culture and spirituality into his music, bringing a unique flavor to the Beatles' work. Indian instruments like the sitar became a regular feature in their music, introducing Western audiences to the sounds of the East. This was a testament to Harrison's dedication to his spiritual journey, a journey that was reflected in his music. One of his most notable contributions during this period was the song, My Sweet Lord. Released in 1970 shortly after the Beatles disbanded, My Sweet Lord was a beautiful expression of Harrison's spiritual beliefs. The song was a tribute to the Hindu god Krishna and became the biggest selling single of 1971 in the UK. It was also the first number one single by an ex beatle My Sweet Lord was more than just a song, it was a reflection of Harrison's spiritual state of mind at the time, it marked his transition from a traditional Christian upbringing to a more expansive Eastern perspective on spirituality. Yet even as he embraced Eastern spirituality, George's quest for spiritual authenticity was far from over. His lifelong quest for spiritual truth and authenticity would eventually lead him down a different path, one that would bring him back to the roots of his Christian faith. And it was this journey that would ultimately define his spiritual legacy. In the late 1970s, George Harrison found an unexpected friend in Brazilian Formula One racing driver, Emerson Fittipaldi. A friendship that blossomed amidst the roaring engines and tire smoke of the racing circuit, their bond was rooted in shared passions. Harrison, an avid fan of Formula One racing, found a kindred spirit in Fittipaldi, who won both the Formula One World Championship and the Indianapolis 500 twice each. Their companionship strengthened when Harrison visited Brazil in 1979 to film a video for his new song, Faster, which was a song about Formula One racing. Their camaraderie was not limited to the racetracks. In 1996, after Fittipaldi had recovered from a very serious crash, Harrison sang a cheeky, impromptu version of Here Comes the Sun to him on a Brazilian television network, celebrating Fittipaldi's recovery. Moreover, surviving that horrific 1996 crash at the Michigan International Speedway, Fittipaldi was faced with his own mortality. This brush with death led to a profound spiritual awakening for Fittipaldi. He converted to Christianity, with his newfound faith becoming a beacon of hope and resilience. According to Wikipedia, Fittipaldi's newfound Christian faith was further reinforced after surviving another near-fatal accident in 1997, when his private plane plunged 90 meters to the ground. 
Fittipaldi's unwavering faith and devotion to Christianity would later play a pivotal role in Harrison's own spiritual journey. Harrison's spiritual journey took him from the stained glass windows of Christianity to the enticing allure of Eastern mysticism, and finally, in his final days in 2001, back to the arms of Christ. In the YouTube video titled, My Sweet Lord Jesus, George Harrison Testimony. Fittipaldi gives an interview about a visit to Harrison in a Switzerland hospital during Harrison's final days. Fittipaldi states, Harrison was an incredible man and we had a very very important experience when he was very sick. I asked for a pastor in Brazil to fly to Switzerland. Harrison was in a hospital in Switzerland. I went to see him for two days with this pastor and we prayed and he accepted Christ. The interviewer then asks, Fittipaldi, George Harrison? And Fittipaldi answers, yes, he, Harrison, accepted Christ before he went. Thus, George Harrison accepted Christ in his final days, marking the end of his lifelong spiritual journey seeking spiritual authenticity. It is widely thought that Harrison died as a devoted and loyal Hindu. Yet, as Fittipaldi's testimony makes clear, when faced with his own impending death apparently, the Hindu religion lacked much to be desired for Harrison personally, and Harrison ended up accepting Christ. In conclusion, Harrison was on a lifelong quest for spiritual authenticity, and in the end he apparently failed to find it within Hinduism, and thus accepted Christ. Or should I say, he embraced an authentic relationship with Jesus which was free from hypocrisy. It is also important to give an example of just how deep Fittipaldi's Christian faith is. In a 2014 article in Sports Spectrum, Fittipaldi is quoted as saying, My advice to you is first open your heart to God and Jesus. You are going to receive so much love, you are going to receive so much life. And it is also important to note that Harrison who had spent a significant part of his life exploring Eastern mysticism and expressing his devotion to the Hindu god Krishna through his music, would accept Christ as he was nearing death. In short, Harrison's acceptance of Christ was no small act. Obviously and spiritually speaking this was a significant shift on his part. But it was one that, according to Fittipaldi, he undertook wholeheartedly and willingly. Harrison's acceptance of Christ was not a last-minute conversion, but was, in reality, a culmination of his lifelong quest for spiritual authenticity. It was a testament to his open heart and open mind, his willingness to question, explore, and ultimately find his own spiritual truth. In the end, George Harrison, the spiritual beetle, found the spiritual authenticity he had been seeking all his life in the person of Christ. Personally, and having grown up with the music of the Beatles and knowing the story behind Harrison's own lifelong journey looking for spiritual authenticity, I find his acceptance of Christ at the end of his life to be nothing less than astonishing. For me personally, it truly is amazing. In closing I think it is very fitting to note Harrison's final words. According to his wife Olivia, Harrison's final words were, Everything can wait, but the search for God cannot wait. Love one another.